Fox News contributor, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. You are very confident after Iowa that you feel the primary is over. Um, I would assume that position has not changed. Uh, what do you make of the rise in polls post-Iowa? And do you agree with me that I think Ron DeSantis supporters are more likely to go to President Trump than to, say, Nikki Haley? Well, first of all, I agree with everything you said about Governor DeSantis, who I do think has a great future, has been an extraordinarily good governor, and I hope that he will stay active in public life. Uh, I think that uh, I just did a newsletter for tomorrow at Gingrich 360 pointing out this is about to be the longest general election in American history. I think it's something like 287 days from Wednesday until Election Day. Uh, Donald Trump tomorrow night will be the Republican nominee. Uh, if, if Ambassador Haley is wise, uh, she'll find a graceful way, as uh, Governor DeSantis did, to get out of the race. If she's unwise, uh, she will go to South Carolina and she will be decisively defeated in her home state. And that will just shrink her. Right now, you have to have great respect for her courage, her determination, her energy, her articulation. Uh, she's about as high as she's ever going to get. Uh, and I think if tomorrow night ends, as Matt Towery suggests, and I think he's right, uh, it's going to be Trump somewhere between 15 and 30 points ahead of her. Well, two primaries in a row against the man who totally dominates the party nationally, uh, the objective reality is it's over. And I think... If that's what happens tomorrow night, uh, then I hope Governor Haley will decide that um, she's done her best, just as Governor DeSantis did, but that, in fact, this is now Donald Trump's party and we need to unify to defeat Joe Biden. I think what we're seeing emerge, though, is a bench, because let's say Donald Trump's the nominee and let's say he wins the general election. Uh, in four years, there will be a real open primary. And uh, I would not be at all surprised to see people like Governor DeSantis, people like Nikki Haley wanting to jump in then as well. Uh, at that point, they got to calculate, you know, this four year interim period of time. Now, we now see the biggest number that Donald Trump is leading over Joe Biden. We also see Joe Biden has the lowest poll numbers he's ever had, 33 percent. You see that he's losing a big part of his base, African-Americans, Hispanic Americans, uh, women, young people, a, a big part of what we usually look at as the base of the Democratic Party. Um, if that continues, how could he possibly come back? Look, I mean, the objective reality is that at a performance level, this is a disastrous administration. Biden's illegal immigrants alone would sink a normal candidate. And it's just going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Uh, Chicago announced yesterday they have no extra space. New York got so desperate, they kicked out American school children for the night and brought in illegal immigrants because it was so cold. Uh, I mean, every time people turn around, the illegal immigration policy of Biden, which is a deliberate policy to open the border and have the maximum number of people enter the U.S. illegally, that's blowing up on the Democrats everywhere. Second, um, the country is not at all convinced by the woke left-wing radicalism. Simple example, 6 percent of Americans are willing to buy an electric vehicle. The Biden administration wants to make that 100 percent. Well, you can't in a free society, coerce 94 percent of the country into doing something they don't want to do. So I think on both policy grounds and performance grounds, Biden will get worse and worse, weaker and weaker. Democrats will become more and more terrified. And I think this will be a bigger blowout than Reagan over Carter. I think that this is one of the amazing moments in American history. And Trump will have over 280 days to crisscross the country, strengthen the Republican Party, and campaign among groups who normally never see a Republican. I mean, you will have the time now to design a true general election strategy of trying to unify the whole country. And if you watch his tone, he has very correctly begun to move towards a unifying, bring us together, solve problems. For example, fix the big cities, not something Republicans normally talk about. So. 
I'm encouraged that this could be a remarkable general election. But he does have potentially as many as four trials facing him. What impact do you see that potentially having? Just pisses people off. I mean, I had a woman today, literally, we were at, close and I were a giant doing some grocery shopping, and a woman came up to me, African-American, works at the store. She said, you know, I'm not quite sure I'm for Trump, but I hate what they're doing to him. And I think it's really unfair, and it really bothers me. And I think that's true of almost every American. If they had picked one fight and gone after him legally on one ground, that might have made sense. But when you see them coming at him from every single angle, and of course now, with the, with the uh, problems that Fannie Willis has in, uh, in Atlanta, uh, it begins it, to be almost like theater of the absurd. You talk yeah, about well, Fulton, Fulton County. Fulton County. Yeah. Fulton County DA, yes. Fannie Willis. Well, I mean, well, they got problems I mean, there. I mean, they, they, they have a lot of delays seemingly in the D.C. case as well. I don't think Alvin Bragg has even decided well, what he's actually charging Trump with in New York, which was the first set of charges. So, I mean, God only knows how that's going to work out. When people... And, and, yeah. I'm just going to say, when people realize that the District of Columbia voted 95 percent for Biden that the current judge is a radical left-winger, that the current prosecutor is so uh, out of the rules that the Supreme Court actually admonished him for having broken the rules and trying to get another Republican politician years ago, they're just going to say, this whole thing is rigged. And I, I don't care what they try to do to Trump. When it's rigged, the country's going to rally to the individual against the establishment. And all they're doing, I think they got Trump the nomination uh, at least a month earlier. I really thought he would get it by uh, the time we got to Super Tuesday. I never dreamed he would get it by uh, the, the end of the New Hampshire primary, which was really the last great stand of the non-Trump Republicans. And it tells you that what's happened is the radical, corrupt Biden ju Judicial Department, or Justice Department, has in fact so alienated people that given a choice, whatever Trump's weaknesses may sometimes be, he is the person standing and representing all of us who need protection from an out-of-control left-wing government. And I think that gives him a strength that we have probably not seen in modern times. Wow. Coming from you, a great historian, that's an amazing comment. Newt Gingrich, great to have you. As always, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.